everyone! Today we are going to learn about one of the most important natural resources, the soil. To help us dig into our soil education, I have invited an expert on the subject. Let's give him a worm welcome. Hello, worm lovers and soil supporters. It is I, S.K. Worm. The S.K. stands for Scientific Knowledge. I am the official annelid, or worm, for you non-soil dwellers, of the U.S. Department of Agriculture's Natural Resources Conservation Service. Today, we are going to learn about my favorite thing in the world, soil. Ah, it's a dirty job, but some worm has to do it. Make sure you pay close attention today because I will be giving a short quiz to test your new soil knowledge. Well, before we get started, let's talk a little bit about what soil is. Soil is commonly referred to as dirt, but soil and dirt are two very different things. To help explain this, let's play an imagination game. Everyone, close your eyes and imagine that it just stopped raining outside and you go into your backyard to play in the mud. And if you're anything like my kids, you like to squish the mud in between your fingers. Hey! Make sure you're not squishing any worms. <laughs> now imagine that it's really hot and all that mud squishing has made you thirsty. So you decide to walk into your house, walk to the kitchen, open up the fridge, and pour yourself a big cup of cold water to drink. Everyone say, ah. As you're enjoying your water, you realize that you forgot to take off your shoes and you forgot to wash your hands. You tracked dirt all across your kitchen floor and you left dirty handprints on the fridge. Now quick, open up your eyes before your mom notices all of the mess that you made. So you see, Soil is not dirt, but it can become dirt if you move it from a place it's supposed to be, like outside in the mud puddle, into a place where it's not supposed to be, like in your kitchen. So SK Worm, now that we know what dirt is, can you tell us about soil? Let me give you the dirt on soil. Soil is different things to different people. For me, it is where I live and eat. But for you, soil is where you grow your food or build your house. So SK, soil is different things to different people depending on how it is used? That's correct. Let's dig a little deeper into what soil is and how it's made. Do any of you like to bake? When I bake, I like to make cookies and cake. Now cookies and cake have very similar ingredients. Some of the ingredients that they share are milk, flour, sugar, and eggs. But after I put those ingredients together, they all look a little different after I cook them. Kind of depending on how much of each ingredient you use, you're going to end up with a different baked good, either cookies or cake. Hey, soil is the same way. There are four basic ingredients or components that make up soil, and depending on how much of these different soil components there are, determines what type of soil you will have. Hmm. Do any of you know what the main ingredients are of soil? Let's look at SK's soil and see if we can find any clues. Now, 
one of the main four ingredients is something that we breathe in. Everyone take a big breath. What do you think that first main ingredient is? You got it, it's air. Now, the second main ingredient is something that we need when we're really hot after playing outside and we come in and we're really thirsty. What do you think that second main ingredient is? You got it, it's water. Now looking at some of the things in this soil, the third main ingredient, you might see this grass or you might see some different critters living in this soil and pretty soon all of that grass is going to die out and become part of the soil in something that we call organic matter. And that's what makes the soil really dark and rich. And the fourth main ingredient are rocks and minerals. Sometimes you'll see some rocks when you're digging in the soil, your shovel might hit something hard. All soil has rocks and minerals in it. The four main ingredients, water, air, organic matter, and rocks and minerals. Great job, you got them all. You kids really do know your soil. Mm -hmm. Did you know that there are more than 70,000 different kinds of soil wow. in the United States? No. Now let's talk about the minerals that are found in the soil. Mm -hmm. Minerals are not mini rolls you might eat for breakfast, but rather teeny tiny rocks that I might eat for my breakfast. There are three different size minerals that are found in the soil. Can you guess what these three minerals are? So do you know what the three main minerals are in our soil? I have some props here to help us understand the different sizes of our minerals. Now the largest size mineral we have can be found at the beach. Does anybody know what mineral that is? That is sand. The smallest size mineral is something that you might see in art class that you can mold and make bowls out of. What mineral do you think that is? It's clay. And the third mineral is the middle sized one and we call it silt. It feels a lot like flour. Now, you can see the grain of sand with your eye, just like if you were at the beach, you can see individual pieces of sand but you would need a very powerful microscope to see the clay size minerals. And to show the relative size of these minerals, imagine you're looking through a microscope at a grain of sand. It looked maybe like the size of this basketball. Compare that to a size of silt might look like this tennis ball and clay would be about the size of this bright red pin on the top of this tennis ball. So those are the three main minerals we are going to find in our soil. These minerals are created when weather and plants break down rock to form these tiny rocks and minerals. That's a great description of minerals. Now let's learn a little about soil organic matter and why it matters to soil. Can anyone name an animal that lives in the soil like me? Can you guys think of any animals that live in the soil other than worms? There's quite a few. Um, I can think of ants live in the soil. We have gophers, we have moles. There's some snakes that like to burrow into the soil. So there's a lot of different soil dwelling animals. Those are all great examples of soil dwellers. Good job. Along with animals, there are also fungi, bacteria, and many other organisms that make their home in the soil. In fact, one shovel full of soil has more organisms in it than there are people on the planet. Many of the medicines we use to fight off colds and flu come from the soil. Hmm. 
As you look at the soil SK worm is in, you'll notice it's darker near the surface. This is because when plants die, they decompose, making the soil at the surface a darker color than what's down below. Yep, soil provides a place for plants to anchor themselves. It also provides the food, water, and air plants need to survive. Of course, my soil home provides me with the food, water, and air I need as well. It's true the soil helps plants, but the plants also help the soil. They leave pores in the soil, allowing water and air to move in for soil life. Animals like me are also important pore makers. Soil is a very important part of SK's life but is equally important to each of you and I. Now, does anybody out there like cheeseburgers? I love to eat a cheeseburger. And every single thing on this cheeseburger comes from the plants that grow in the soil. Now let's talk a little bit about this cheeseburger. Part of it is the burger itself. So where do we get our burger? This burger comes from a cow. What do cows like to eat? They like to eat grass. So if we didn't have soil, would we be able to grow that grass? And if we didn't have grass, would we have cow to make this burger? No. So even the meat on this burger comes from plants. Everything else, the lettuce, the tomato, all is a plant. And the bun is made from wheat, which is a plant. Everything comes from plants which grow in the soil. People also use plants for clothing. Plants, like cotton, provide fibers that are used in cloth. Sheep also eat plants, and people also make fabric out of their wool. Some other ways that we use plants is we use them to build our homes or to make furniture that we put into our homes. Plants also help keep soil in its place. That's right! Plant roots hold the soil and protect it from washing or blowing away in a process called soil erosion. You're right. Farmers and developers have found ways to use grass and trees to keep soil from eroding away. When soil erodes, it moves into our streams, our rivers, and our lakes, polluting them. Have any of you seen brown, murky water? Over six billion tons of soil erodes off the land in the United States every year. My friends at the Natural Resources Conservation Service and the Soil and Water Conservation Districts can help you be naturally resourceful about natural resources. You're right, SK. I work for a Soil and Water Conservation District, and we work with farmers every day who grows the food for everyone to eat. Erosion can cause loss of crops, loss of topsoil, loss of nutrients, so farmers end up paying a lot for soil erosion. So we work with farmers to try to help them keep their soil on their fields. Thanks for your help. I'm glad I'm a soil dweller and don't have to pay for all that stuff. Most soils, like the soil below me, has layers, which are called horizons. Soils typically have topsoil, subsoil, and parent material. You can see all three right here. You sure can. Now the topsoil has more organic matter and is found at the surface of the soil. It's typically darker than the subsoil, which is just below. Now the subsoil is a layer that has broken down rocks and minerals, and it's broken down by water soaking into the soil. It's also used for plants. They anchor their roots deep into that soil. The parent material, which is all the way at the bottom, also known as bedrock, 
is made up of all of the rocks that are used in the rest of the other layers of soil. Many soils have bedrock that is often found in layers. Sometimes these rock layers have fossils in them. Can you find the trilobite fossil in the bedrock below? It happens to be the Ohio State Fossil. Trash can sometimes also be found in the soil, like plastic bags or pop cans. These may someday break down and become part of the soil, but for now, they are soil pollution. Can you help your instructor find two items that don't belong in the soil? Do you guys happen to see any pollution on SK's soil? I see two things. I see a water bottle here that's poking up at the top. You can kind of see the side. And then on top, another plastic baggie. Speaking of Ohio stuff, did you know Ohio has a state soil? It's Miamian and is the most extensive soil in the state, occurring on over 750,000 acres. Wow. SK, what are all those colors in your subsoil? Those are soil watercolors. Those yellow and gray stains in the subsoil are made by water oxidizing and reducing the iron in the soil, the same way metal rusts if it is not protected. Hmm. Now I know it's not polite to ask how old you are, but could you tell us how old soil is? It can take anywhere from just a few years to over a thousand years to produce just one wow. inch of soil. Wow. SK, what are the factors that influence how fast soil is formed? The four factors are climate, organisms, parent material, and topography. It's quiz time! Press the T button for true and the F button for false. Is soil just dirt? Okay, so is soil just dirt? Do you remember when you were outside squishing mud in the mud puddles and you went inside to get a sip of water? Is soil and dirt the same thing or are they different? You're right. Soil and dirt are different. Let's see. Good answer. That's exactly right. Soil is not dirt. Dirt is what you get when soil is moved to a place it's not supposed to be. Right. I made up an acronym for dirt. It's Displaced Important Resource Treasure. And that's the dirt on soil. Hmm. It can take 1,000 years to form one inch of soil. It skips the question. Oh, so it can take 1,000 years to create one inch of soil. Do you think that's true or false? You guys remember? It can. Let's see. Great job. Okay. It can take up to 1,000 years to form one inch of soil but most soils form in significantly less time than that. Weather, plants, and type of parent material all make a big difference in how long it will take to form an inch of soil. Ooh. Does the weather matter to soil? Hmm. True or false? Do you think the weather matters to soil? He kind of just talked a little bit about that. I think true. Let's see. Wow, you're right. Okay. Whether you believe it or not, weather helps make soil. And that's no snow job. Does soil have layers? Does soil have layers? Do you remember talking about layers? We have the dark layer, the middle, and the bottom. I think you're right. Let's see. Oh, you really do know your soils. The three layers in the soil are topsoil, subsoil, 
and parent material. The topsoil is alive with roots, tiny microstuff like bacteria and fungi, and all kinds of critters like me. <laughs> the topsoil is tops with me. Does soil need air and water? Does soil need air and water? Now remember, there's four main ingredients of soil. Do you guys remember what those four main ingredients are? Good job. Two of which are water and air. Can anybody name the other two? We have organic matter and rocks and minerals. So I think true. Good answer. Water and air are two of the four components that make soil what it is. Mm -hmm. The burrows that I and my pals dig in let in air. That's good news for us undergrounders who need air and water to survive. Oh, by the way, I don't have lungs for breathing. I breathe through my skin. Uh, please, don't try this at home. Can we keep soil from washing and blowing away? So I work for the Soil and Water Conservation District and we work with farmers to do just this. We try to make sure that they have something growing in their fields all year long to stop their soil from moving. So are there ways to keep soil from eroding away? Let's see. Another one correct. There's soil saving going on right now. People are using plants and grass to hold the soil down. Call my pals at the Natural Resources Conservation Service and Soil and Water Conservation Districts. They'll tell you all you need to know to get things going and growing. You're right, SK.